Hey all, my name is Nim or Nimicree if you're feeling professional, and welcome to what I am tentatively calling Reputation Buff. Now that would imply that somebody gains increased reputation from associating with me, and we'll see if I'm a liar by uh, circumstance at the end of this. That being said, of course, uh, I'm a longtime WoW creator and a whole bunch of other things. I'm here with the very first interview. A gentleman by the name of Naked Kuma. Now, I know that, again, that's a very lascivious and lewd name that people might think, oh, no, can we find him in some type of, in his natural state? And the answer is, maybe we'll get an OnlyFans link at some point. I don't know right now. We'll find out from the gentleman himself. But, Kuma, mm. I can talk forever. Why don't you take the floor, introduce yourself? Okay. So, yeah, my name's Naked Kuma. Um, Honestly, guys, I'm just a gamer, man. I'm, I'm not, like what you would call an elitist or anything like that. I mean, like, I can be. I can be, because, I mean, who isn't tarnished, weathered champion of, like, anything that they've done online, right? But, you know, I don't. I choose not to be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is that the bulwark? That is the from... bulwark of Azanoth, sir. <laughs> we bring out the big guns. We respect yes, our sir. WoW creators. <laughs> we respect our WoW creators. This is for the trolls and the haters who think that I don't have the best vocabulary. Bulwark of Bro. And you know how it's real? Chinese. Right there. Oh, <laughs> so shit. It's, it's even got the fucking stats, too. The stat lock, yep. The... <laughs> Anyways, continue. I just, I just, I just had to bring it up. Like, let's do this, <laughs> dude. The bulwark of Azanoth is one of the most legendary items in the game. When I was a GM on a private server for a while, I literally was a rogue that ran around with the bulwark on top of the fucking scarab with the fucking dark overtone, and in my right hand, I would have the uh, the axe that came from the dang. What's that axe called? I know. Yes, the one from Akuma. It was like it was like it, no 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 no. Yes, Akuma's the big rock giant outside, no, right? No, no, that's supremacy. No, that's, that's, that's supremacy. Okay, so what's supremacy? Supremacy is the one outside, right yeah, there. He's, he's the he big, drops the axe. He's the big. Inferno. He drops the axe. Okay. Either it was him or it was a boss before him, but I think it's supremacy. They drop an axe, and it's this fucking like green, like or brownish like axe, dude. It's so fucking lit, bro. I love that axe. I forgot what the name of it is. I'll, I'll be but, honest. I I I I'm two hand. I've been a two hander for most of the game uh you know with with paladin so or or a you know, sword and board again with paladin or i've been keeping people this side of life who wish for death with the paladin uh so with, with the you know it's and and you see i'm from ohio so we have mm -hmm. we're in the midwest we have corn judgment and heroin which makes sense that uh i have a paladin symbol on my chest judgment more specifically just, so, so that's that. But so, Kuma, uh, from what I understand, you know, I'm, I know you from Twitter and everything. You're a uh, bit of a streamer, kind of a renaissance man when it comes to gaming, based on the background. You know, a little, little, little bit of dabble in a lot of things. You and I, though, we share friends. Uh, we we share stuff of uh, One Piece uh, a lot, and we'll we'll get to. Well, believe me, we'll get to that. But since you have some merchandise, I just want to throw this out there. That's a uh, Red Hawk Luffy. We 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 love we love Red Hawk Luffy. That's uh, Chopper Aimon. Because we love Chopper oh, Ivan. Oh, uh, and of course, we have Chopper. Onami. Oh. Onami. So, so, there you go. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't collect a lot. Nami Swan. Yeah, I don't collect uh, a lot of Funko Pops. Uh, okay. But I do have a few of One Piece. And I got a few other ones over there just from various mm -hmm. things. But ostensibly, I know you from WoW Twitter. You know, that's that's how that's where I know that's where I met you. So let's talk about, you know, what brought you to WoW, right? If you can remember, if we can think back, peel the layers of Man. time back, open the lore textbook. I'll never forget what brought me to WoW. I'll never ever forget it because it's one of the most like iconic stories ever. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. My high school teacher, Mr. Seamster, is what taught me World of Warcraft. Okay. I'll never forget. Coming into class one day and watching him playing World of Warcraft on the school computer, he was playing a level 60 Night Elf Rogue, and he was at, I think he was at Booty Bay, killing Horde, and it pissed me off. Oh, I was like, bro, you can't be out there killing orcs. I was like, who do you think that you are? But even still, I went home and I played the game and I and I played a Night Elf Rogue, and I don't know why I did. 
But as soon as I did, and I hit like level 10, I got to fucking Darnassus. Darnassus was under attack by a bunch of horde. Just a bunch of horde. I was typing in chat like, yo, what are we going to do? You know, I'm low level. I don't know what the hell I can do. But I'm like, bro, we got to defend Darnassus, dude. They were like, bro, shut up and go back and level, bro. They were like, boo, get out of here. I was like, what, bro? For real? So I deleted that alliance and I immediately rolled Night Elf Hunter. I mean, Orc Hunter after that. And I, I haven't looked back since. All right. That, all That's right. literally my upbringing. Yeah. So, so was this? Was this? Because I think you and I are, are similar ages. I'm 36. So that was yeah. that was probably. I'm in, 35 this year. Yeah, I would say so. So that when you were in high school, like that was classic. Mm -hmm. That was. That oh was yeah, that the... was vanilla. I think. Yeah. When I started playing was maybe I think BWL. I, actually, nah, man. I feel like either BWL was just announced or. I think BWL had just announced, got announced when I started playing, and I took for it took me forever to like level up in World of Warcraft. Even though I played like after school all day every day, I feel like it took me like a year to level up to sixty, bro. So you're you're playing you're playing as this orc hunter, right? You obviously mm -hmm. are experiencing the cancer that is Baron's chat, especially oh, back man. then. Yeah, which is which is a, a crazy crazy trade chat now is a little reckless and. Luckily, we can mute things. Baron's chat, for those who weren't around that back then, was a whole different monster. Uh, so, you know, you, you end up with a hunter. Now, I got to ask, your, your pet, right? You remember the pets that you got. You got your raptor, probably got a zebra, yeah. you know, but when did you get, like, a rare pet? You know what's really funny about me being a hunter back then in high school? I never really thought about rare pets. I just thought about getting pets that look cool to me. Okay. And because I didn't really know about a whole lot about how to really play the game back then. I just played like with my friends, like I played like semi casually hardcore, like type of thing. Um, but like it wasn't, I never really paid attention to my pet. I always knew that you needed like a wolf basically to have like the howl for like back then or i knew that you needed a cat so that you can have like the stealth thing and stuff like that that's what i always went for because i was always a pvp -er, and i was on i was on asglore they were one of the first original servers i played on asglore bro i i, I used to always have be on that server but now i'm on dollar on with the guild but on asglore it was pvp Bro, it was PvP everywhere you went. And if you was a hunter that didn't have a stealth cat, you were fucking up, man. Because that cat did so much opening damage, it was insane back then. Well, I remember the, uh, the, 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 the memes about the naked eviscerate with rogue damage, where you just had a two-handed weapon with the highest swing speed, come out, boom, you know, stun lock, and it's just like, it, eviscerate was an accurate description, because it's like, I took this two-handed weapon, and I just split your stem to stern. And it was and it was great. Uh, you you were you were a thing. Now again, I played as a paladin. That was that was me. Uh, you know, and and I leveled as a holy paladin, all oh, through vanilla. Man. And it was it and I and I, I did, got in a couple of raids, killed rag a couple of times, and mm -hmm. you know then the TBC came out. But it was great because I, I and I'll tell you what brought me. You know the things. So I played a lot of Magic the Gathering. I know. Look at me, shocker. You were like, oh really, Nim? The next thing you're gonna tell me, you like sushi too, huh? Yes, yes Ooh. I do. Uh, it's delicious, and Think I'm gonna like some now. Uh, anyways, so I was playing a lot of Magic the Gathering, and what got me was Holy Shock. Because mm. Holy Shock could be used to harm an enemy or heal an ally. Same spell. I was like, okay, that's utility. I'm, I'm down. And then I found out I can get eight seconds of immunity, you know, one, like once an hour, uh, for, for Divine Shield. And I, I forget the exact timer. I know it was eight seconds. I forget the exact cooldown. Because I, I, since it's been a long time since I played vanilla, and I don't like classic, because I've already, I've already lived that. I don't, I don't need yeah, it. I it, that. It, it. And and no hate to anybody who likes classic. That's fine. I just, I've already done that. I like some of the quality of life features I have in retail. But yeah. so, so that, so that, and and at the time I was playing something known as Anarchy Online. Uh, it's a an MMO done by Funcom. And I've heard that game eight eight seconds is an eternity in an MMO. Eight yeah. seconds was crazy. So I was like, I could literally just not worry about stuff. Okay. And that that energy took me forward all the way through the game, like in, in Tomb of, of, of Soakcraft, you know, the, the Tomb of Sargeras, where every boss had a soak mechanic. You'd get an overlap, like, get out. I double soak with the bubble. And it's like, now we do more DPS. It's fantastic. I, yeah. I, I remember all that stuff being just fantastic. And so, you know, being the fact that your high school teacher brought you to WoW, I like I doubt he'll see this, 
but that's hilarious. Just ima yeah, cause imagine having that effect on somebody. Years later, you're like, I still do something that you showed me. You know what was really important to me, too, about that was that that high school teacher was a black high school teacher and taught me that. All right. So that that was like next level to me. I was to me in my head. I was like, niggas do this shit. Like what? Like I was I was just a, a nerd who moved from Louisiana to Texas, and I was like, okay, like trying to figure shit out. And then I got into like anime, and then as, after I got into anime, I found out about like computers and stuff like that, and like video gaming, like on computers stuff. Because I was always like a gamer, but I was like a console gamer. But then in high school, I got like a good new group of friends. These guys are still my friends to this day. Um, it's been like gone on like 10, 15 years now for sure, dude. Um, but like we all, they were already like PC gaming and stuff like that. So I got a computer and it just like took off from there. Especially when Mr. Seamster showed me World of Warcraft. I was like, bro, I gotta get this, bro. I remember in high school when I would get grounded, my mom would take my computer and put it up in her closet, right? Oh. Bro, and when she would go to work, I would take the fucking computer out, I would build it all fucking up real fucking quick, have it fucking ready, and when she would be on her way home, like, 30 minutes before, I'd decompress that bitch, put it back, blah, 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 like, nothing ever happened, baby. I would play World of Warcraft so much, man. Like, that's also why I got into computers, too, was computer maintenance, man. I, I took computer maintenance in high school, too, so I literally knew exactly... <laughs> This is, I can I can build a computer in like less than an hour if I really put my mind to it, bro. Like a fresh build, it's like it's so easy doing it. I love it, man. It's amazing how these threads of fate, da 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 da, da puns, uh, you know, uh, uh, come come together uh, for a thing because ultimately a lot of people, like you know, my 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 family, similar, somewhat similar story in a sense. Where we've we you know they would thought that gaming was not always great and they would ground me. Mm -hmm. My mom used to take the the, the power cable and put a lock through it, a little key, a little journal key lock, you know, those real thin things. And I was like, I just had an extra power cable. She, she didn't want to tear anything. She, so I just plugged an extra power cable. And after a while, she's like, you, you're figuring out how to, how to beat this. You're too happy. You know, like, you, you, you can't, you, you, I know you. You can't, you, you, you're doing something. And, and, and that was at that point, I was like, yeah, Ma, you know, I, I fessed up to it. And, and she's like, all right, just, just don't make me, don't make this an issue. Right. Yeah. Because because my mom's was a single mother, so she she's always at school or Same. work and stuff. So you know she trusted me to do my stuff. And yeah, as a kid, sometimes I screwed up. Uh, you know, and she'd have to do the disciplinarian thing. But you know, you, you get you get the idea, right? You get the idea. So I it's, it's one of those it's one of those things. And you know, I I, I played a lot of D and D with people uh, and, and everything. And what's interesting is my entire friend group enlisted. Right, my entire friend group that I grew up with in, in the high school crowd and everything, uh, they they every one of us enlisted. I served in the Marine Corps. Uh, a couple other people did. The oh, Army. you're a Marine. Yeah, I served Second Battalion, Tenth Marines was the last. Oh station. Well, thank you for your service. It's all right, it's not a problem. Not a problem. Mm -hmm. But let's let's talk let's talk about let's 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 get delve a little deeper into WoW. I think you know because mm -hmm. we we can we can go off on tangents at the end. Yeah, uh, we boy, can. can we? Uh, but we got so let's talk about your favorite class and spec. You know, any era. Oh, you can roll the dice. Doesn't matter what. It, you got a magic wand, friend. Make it happen, Captain. Dude, easy for sure. It's it's Hunter all the way. Hunter okay. survival hunter. Survival. I've really? always I've always wanted to be a melee hunter. And when they introduced that shit back in BFA. My God, bro! I was on I I was on cloud fucking nine. I didn't care how trash it was, what it was. I didn't care. It was the fact that I had harpoon and I had a spear. Only thing that sucked. Oh, the only thing that sucks and it's still so cringe to the today is that you can't dual wield as a survival hunter. Like how you like two handers, I like one handers. <laughs> okay. I like the quick speed of being a dual wield. Any game you see me play, if there's a dual wield option with like a, a two handers, if especially if it's a class that I'm playing, I'm gonna do it. One hundred percent. Like I'm playing Grand Blue Fantasy right now. The two characters that I'm playing right now are two dual wielders. Okay. It's it's just it's just the lore that I love. I love the quickness. I love the speediness that comes with it. You know, it's, it's to me in my head, I'm like it's double the power if you got the speed to go with it. Right. So that's if they would have had that, I'll be so happy. And I think that's part of the reason why I'm playing Season of Discovery so much. Because in Season of Discovery, they have dual will melee hunters, and they are top of the charts right now. They are the charts right now. I, I'll tell you this, that uh, I, I, there were a few seasons uh, since Survivor, Survivor Hunters have been out where they have been absolute monsters of DPS. 
They're nutty, uh, bro. And, and you know, like, I, I know the BM right now was having a moment, and it's been nerfed a little bit, but it was having mm -hmm. a moment, and, and I, I mained a BM Hunter this last year, uh, and we, we, you know, I think Guild's kind of taking a break on raiding because of attendance issues, but we got four of nine Mythic. And oh, almost, nice. Almost, almost Nimue down, yeah. And it, and so it, it's it's not bad. But, you know, if I, I want to talk about class and spec, right, because, you know, I like to I like to throw these out. Favorite class and spec, right, I'm going to be real with you. If I can get, like, a Retribution Paladin from late Wrath of the Lich King. Because it, the thing is, is not only was it a simple rotation, and I like simple mm -hmm. rotations because ultimately lag can screw you over, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and I don't like a lot of procs because, you know, procs are great. They, it's great when it works in your favor, but we've all had that moment where we're fishing. Like, give yeah, me the you're thing. fishing. Give for, me the fishing thing. For shit. Give me the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me the thing. Mm -hmm. And then you, and then you, you know, you, you have that. Uh, that 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 would be that would be one. Or if I if I have to go a little bit more modern, uh, then we go seven point three point five ret paladin. So the reason why I mentioned seven point three point five. What is that? That's legion. Is that... That's I'm about to say that's legion. That's the last patch of legion prior to the pre patch of BFA. So what that did what that did is that made one of the best expansions in its best patch because you could grind for a week. Get all the waking essence you need. Get your two legendaries, and you're mm -hmm. done. You fix the class design was peak, and it was good. And more I think you might be not to get you off. But I think that you might be right about the the wrath paladin though. I'm telling you, I didn't even pay paladin back then, but to me that was a good version of paladin. Oh, it was. like you guys had like all the kit perfect perfect kit for everything that was going on around in the world at that time like especially with all the classes and stuff like that because shadow priests were fucking abysmal back then too you know what i mean so like hey, you guys had a good way to deal with a lot of different things back then so, so like now it's so poppy with all the the randomness like well, yeah weird. well so so okay so i remember i think divine favor was was out still then i i don't remember that was a random proc chance that you could get um, but the thing about paladins that I, I've liked for the longest time is that you generally have an answer for everything. It's not always the best answer, but it is an answer for everything. And yeah. so, you know, you like the Wrath, Wrath paladins were great. And actually, I started tanking at the end of Wrath because I got tired of tanks not, um, not, not being good in the random finder. And so I learned. Mm -hmm. And speaking of hunters... So there was a weapon that I kept trying to get out of the Pit of Sauron. It was called the Tyrannical Beheader. It took me 60 days to get that weapon. 60 individual heroic clears to get that weapon. I saw it drop about five or six times. Every time I lost to, dun da da, a hunter. Because every weapon is a hunter weapon. And it's, ah, ah, it's like, that's. <laughs> That's that's like that's deep seated rage in the back of my brain for that. All time. I gotta say is blame Blizzard, bro. Okay, They're the yeah, ones I, that I, put I, the high top ins. They put the good stats on look, things. I'm not mad at you specifically, Kuma. I, <laughs> I, I like it, but it's you are a totem of the hunters in this case. It's like ah, stop taking that and my meteorite whetstone. You're an agi user. You don't need strength. <laughs> So, you so, I, so I'm, I'm, you I'm, don't. I don't understand some hunters, bro. They just do sh goofy shit. Oh, I get like, it. Like every class has goofy people, but for some reason, hunters are just known as goofy, bro. Well, it's, like, it's the like, face pulling. It's the it's the fact that it's a recommended class for beginners, officially by Blizzard. Um, you know, it's one of it's sure. one of. Those, I mean, there's a whole bunch of things. And and to be fair, every class has its its derpy moments and derpy players, and every class has absolute monsters. That are like, oh, you you want that guy or person or being on your team, you know that, that you want them. So so it's not, no no hate towards the hunters. I just remember that I'm like, because like that was when gear score got really big, and that was the mm -hmm. thing that was keeping me from raiding ICC currently. And I was like, please, I just need one of these two items. And even mm -hmm. though technically I was probably fine because you know players they want to min max everything, I'd have been fine to do you know reclears, but I just could never get into the reclears with the guild at the time, and it was a crap guild anyways so let's add let's let's give you let's give you a little thing here so i, I mentioned magic wand earlier right we all like enacting mm -hmm. changes and and suiting tailoring the environment to suit our, our taste so i give all you right. a magic wand and i'm gonna let you fix something in the game what do you fix but let's we'll talk about pvp later um, what would i fix in game mm. you know what's really crazy the biggest thing that i've always wanted they are kind of doing okay 
with the war bands. Really? Okay. I I like I'm not a huge Final Fantasy fan, but there's elements of Final Fantasy that I wish World of Warcraft would adopt. And I would and I if I had a magic wand, I would make it to where you only have one character and that one character can be any spec or any class. Just any class and it just fluctuates between what it is that you do and to me it makes so much sense in world of warcraft lore because we are the hero character the way that they've worked the morphed us into now because before we weren't really that we were just regular soldiers you know what i mean but we turned into like the hero character and to me in my mind i'm like if i'm the hero character why can't i be any class that i want to be in this game like that, I, to me, that would be the greatest thing. That would be the the best thing for me because I only have that one character that's allowed to do things. And then if I make another character, it's because oh, I like this race. You know what I mean? And then it would. I don't know. I think that that if World of Warcraft went that direction, it would be a lot better. But Warbands is a good start to something like that. So that's why I'm like, you know what, Warbands is good because it reminds me of Lost Ark. And Lost Ark, you you would have like your little six main characters, yeah, and you could siphon uh, energy from like four of them or something like that a week and stuff. You know, like I I thought that was really cool. You were able to like mid max a lot better. So if they work war bands correctly and they open the, the floodgates a little bit for it to where say if i have two hunters i can switch gear in between them or something like that so that i can always be able to go ahead and stuff i don't know i think that shit would be cool because that was another thing that i liked about destiny was in destiny if i made three warlocks i could just interchange all the, i could run the raid three times that week and i'll get three all gear for my warlock and i could just put it in my vault and take it out on whichever character i wanted that's how I don't know. I like, it's, see, it's, it's, I like that. I like that idea because I'm a big fan of, and anyone who's seen the channel knows, I'm a big fan of removing artificial barriers that decrease player enjoyment. All right. So yeah. the fact is that, like, you being able to trade gear back and forth uh, with characters that are on your account, and it's not like it, you, you, you didn't cheat to get the gear. You got the gear, mm -hmm. you got lucky, you got the drop, you got whatever. It's fine. It's yours, legitimately. It's not like I you, anything got hacked or anything. But the, the point is that. By at by removing artificial barriers, that run becomes more productive, and mm -hmm. people like dopamine. People like seeing big numbers. People like seeing goals. That's why you know we MMO players we constantly fill the bar. So I I am a fan of more deterministic and more um, you know like rewarding things because nobody likes wasted effort, right? Yeah. So the fact the fact that like I can get like that's I I like the crest system that we have. I don't like the fact that there was a cap. Now, at this point, if you make a new character, it's it it, it doesn't matter because you're so at this point you're it it's I think I've like at like twelve ninety or something like that. I can get total of aspects, and that's more than I I mean that that's more than I could possibly use. But mm -hmm. early on, it really hit hard, and and I guess I don't know why they they do that to progress. That's Blizzard to do, that's Blizzard's thing to do. I just think that. Removing barriers to player enjoyment is a good thing. So, say that's why we have cross faction rating. That's why we have cross faction guilds. Because now it's what? Why does it matter that I, I, that you know, Johnny over there has to be Horde or you know, Tim has to be Alliance? You I know, can tell you this right now. If they didn't have flight stones. In retail, I would play retail a lot more. Really? Because I would be able... Yeah, because flight stones are such... The, the smallest, minuscule thing to have to get whenever you're trying to, like, gear up, like, your character. Because I understand, like, the crest to level them up. But also, I would be missing, like, a, a low ton of flight stones to be able to gear some... But I, but I also just ran this dungeon 50 times trying to get these two items. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I finally got the two items, but I don't have enough to level up all my gear to a certain level of flight stones because you all, you have it time gated to where I only get a certain amount from it and stuff. Well, well, you know. Not, 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 so so the thing with flight stones and just as a mm -hmm. as a clarification is that uh, so once you upgrade a piece of gear to a certain rank in in a track, so let's say you upgraded mm -hmm. all the way six out of six hero in yeah. your shoulders. So any yeah. shoulders that you get now that are hero track can be upgraded at a reduced flight stone cost, no crest cost, as long as they're hero track. Mm -hmm. So that way, so let's say you get a piece with a tertiary or a socket, you know, okay, you mm -hmm. just upgrade it, boom, it's fine. Also, generally you get bonus flight stones if you do, uh, if, if you get like, I think you get like 25 bonus stuff and an X amount when you do a, a key. 
and you get the bonus okay. if somebody's if somebody's IO goes up. So one of the things I'll do as a kind of oh a, that's what yeah. it is if someone's IO yeah. goes yeah, so up. Yeah, when somebody's IO oh. or rating goes up. So what I'll do from time to time, like on my paladin, when I want to help out with this stuff, because my my paladin's a, a, a Keystone hero healer. It's like twenty seven hundred. Mm -hmm. So I'll okay, go okay. I'll, I'll go into like lower level stuff and just I, there's nothing I need. I don't need crests. I don't need yeah. stones. And I'm just helping out, but because people's IO goes up, you know, and we and I can basically guarantee a successful run, will end up will we'll end up you know people get more flight stones. So I think I think it's more at, at your approach, Kuma, with that is is it's a min maxing, you know, approach that you would have to take. Now that being said, do I think that flight stones can be annoying to acquire? Yes, obviously it, it can. Uh, but I know like if, I know that if you do like the the opening campaign. Uh, and get all the rewards for like the Emerald Dream. You get something like a thousand flight stones. Yeah, a lot. So, a so lot. which is great. That'll get you a couple of pieces. But you know, when a weapon is two hundred and ninety-five flight stones or one hundred and thirty-five flight stones, I mean, that's a thousand. It's a lot easier to do it now. Yeah. When the caverns first opened up, when it was just the caverns, they didn't have the dream. It was so bro. I would be in the caverns every day, day out. Flying around, killing rares. Yeah, just trying to get, get just a little, trying to get know, flight 10, stones. 15 flight stones at a time. Yeah, and, and yes, you know, and, and 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 again, I like the idea of the bonus flight stones for helping out stuff. And personally, I think that if if I were to give a magic wand, right, like really realistically, I would do more incentives for higher level players to go into lower level content with new players. Because here's the How thing. Do you do it? Because he, here's the thing, right, like. You, you and I are probably pretty good at the game regardless, right? And let's, so we're in a team, and then there's a third person who, like, you know, is not a strong healer, let's say. Okay, well, how do we help them do this? Well, we handle interrupts, we, we be kind, and we teach. And by doing that, that healer gains a little bit of experience, understands how to do the fight at a potentially higher level in a correct manner. So now when they get there, it's not like, oh my god, spike damage plus debuff plus movement plus this plus that. It's, okay, I already know this. I know that the tank needs to move him to the corner. Once the tank moves him to the corner, then I'm going to have a debuff. Once I have that debuff, I'm going to cleanse that debuff. Then there's going to be a big spike damage phase. Pop, you know, I tell everybody either pop defensives or pre-plan as much as I can. And boom, we, what goes from a potentially like oh, 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 encounter to, all right, we got this. Maestro, please. And it becomes a very smooth dance. He, and they have a system in game for us to engage with new players. I, I'm a right? guide. I am a guide, but it's not. I'm really a guide pushed. myself, right? Really pushed. But 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 exactly. That's what I was just about to say. They don't they don't incentivize it. Well, you I, don't get anything from being a guide. What well, do you well, get from it? Well, well, I don't want an incentive to be a guide. Like I want, I like that as it is because Final Fantasy XIV has mentorship and there's rewards for yeah. that and there's a lot of toxic mentors who don't really know what what I want what is the f oh, really yeah for real like, oh for real, my for real. I now, forget that you can make anything toxic to me I'm like what do you mean to why would yeah, you be yeah, toxic you you signed up to be a mentor yeah because like, what you you would be like oh I know this class uh, I know these combat I know these encounters yeah I'm here to help what do you need? Bro, Ask forget. me. People are stupid. Yeah, yeah people are. And, and again, so so the thing is, is but as as a, what I would like is I would love to see a commendation system for mm. guides, for guides specifically, and 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 it like just I don't know, give you a title maybe, like the most mm -hmm. least the least impactful thing, right? Because I, if it's a mount, it's gonna be farmed. If it's a pet, mm -hmm. it's gonna be farmed. If it's an mm -hmm. achievement, it's gonna be farmed. So we, we know that's going to happen regardless, so we need to minimize the amount of draw that that gets. Also, what I would do is let's say that you do add one of those things to a guide idea. I would then say, like, what if we give the option of when that pops up, do you want to opt out of being a guide? No, and, and, like, very clearly say, like, no penalty will be occurred. You'll keep the title or something, or you'll keep the mount, or you'll keep the pet. Because then the people who are in it are the ones who want to help. Yeah, and that's and and I, uh, is, you know my my thought there. I think that do that and also on the tail end, give something for the person who's like the the new person, right? Have them to where you as the as the guide can't get something until they complete something on their end as well too. Yeah, like even if it's just like completing like a quest where it's like literally just click a button and it automatically turns in. It's like but 
I feel like it would be good if they could give you like maybe like a review, maybe even if it's just like a a one to five, yeah, right. And they just hit the five, and it instantly gives you a review. But if they say like one, this guy was a jerk, didn't do anything, that could fall back on you. Maybe you could lose access to the guide system because of negative reviews. But I feel like in this situation, yeah, people might review bomb, but really, would people review bomb? You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like if you help a new person that was generally new. You're gonna get the good shit. Well, especially if if it's only goes to the new player, as opposed yeah. to the as opposed to like open community. Yeah, you're gonna have people be be jerks and you know bomb stuff. But new, you know, just the new player, just the person like you know, hey, we helped out Tim. Tim learned how yeah. to do some. Tim's like, yeah, hey, thanks for the help. And you know, maybe Tim got a piece of gear. Maybe Tim didn't. It doesn't matter. But the point the point is 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 is, is that. And I, I really I really like that. I like the idea because again, at the end of the day, it's a massively multiplayer online role playing game. Exactly. So part of that is multiplayer. We gotta work together. That's why I never got mad about, about the social contract. Cause here's the thing, in, in all the years I've played WoW, I've never been banned. Like it's weird. People say like, oh, people get banned all the time, Nim. It's like, that's weird. Uh it sounds like a skill issue. Cause I've Bro. I've I've never been banned. Now some people like some people might go in and like mass flag me. I don't know, maybe that'll happen now. But, like, I, I'm not worried about it because Blizzard will look at the account and be like, you don't even talk in chat, really. Yeah, because I'm in Discord or I'm talking to the guild or, like, I'm not, I'm not being, I'm not out there acting a fool. I'm just, yeah. just I'm, I'm an adult, like, talking to, realistically, other adults. I know, <laughs> I know the game. I know the game I play. I know what's up. You know, yeah, and, and real, listen, we got to understand the home is where the Hearthstone is. Hey, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, as, uh, you know what's crazy? I don't have a whole lot of Blizzard merchandise. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm I, a whale. I'm a whale. They, 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 I, they've got I, me. I want more. They, I need to get more. They've got me. They, 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 they've got me. <laughs> they have good. They have good merch, man. They have I'll, good I'll merch. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what they do. I got. I got one of the one of the, the alliance blanket. Right, the fleece blanket. Mm -hmm. Warmer than you would think. Really? For real? For real? It was. It's warm. not thin. It's not no. thin see through. No, it's warmer than what? you would think. Like, it's, it's, hey. actual, it's actual real. Like it's one of the things. Okay. So I okay. Just, I just throw Respect that out Blizzard. There. Throwing out, yeah. Somebody put some material into that. So we okay. we've danced around this topic as much as I think we can, and it's time to uh, cue for arena and discuss. Let's talk about PvP, right? I'm not much of a PvPer, and that's due to two reasons. One, I like happiness. And two, lack of skill. Just want to mention both of those things off the rip, right? Because, you know, some people are like, oh, really, really good. Like, no, no, bro, it's not me. I couldn't, couldn't be me. Uh, so I don't really do a whole lot of PvP. I, I have, I think, I think at one point, like in Kata, I was a Holy Paladin and I did like, uh, I did like arenas and I got like hot streak or hotter streak or something. And I did a few random achievements here and there. But outside of that, I don't, I don't touch PvP. So as I understand PvP, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. PvP is like the child that you don't love and actively show that you don't love. In fact, you actually take things away from the child because the child is having fun with it. Like, uh, I think Eye of the Storm or, or Strand of the Ancients, maybe? If I remember, yeah, there, there were maps. Still deactivated. Still deactivated. Like, don't you still guys get, get like one map every two or three expansions? That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, they, they give us the crazy part about that's an exact way to describe how they treat us as PvPers. Like, we're just like, well, and, and furthermore, I wouldn't even say child. I would say the stepchild. Stepchild. Okay. Right? So, not, okay. Like, I, I would I would say not even cut from the same blood. Like, they treat us like we're not even from the same fucking blood. It's, it's so cringe. Like, the way that I think of PvP is that it's like taking. 10 of the biggest assholes in the Call of Duty lobby and forcing them to be on the same team and get along with each other and have an objective get done. It's very, very hard and it's very, very taxing. So I kind of understand why they don't give a shit about us because we are... If you PvP, you can PvP or you can really PvP, right? Like, people say, like, oh, I PvP. That's like, oh, that's nice, you know? But, you know, like, do you really PvP? Because if you p really PvP, you have to realize that you have to put up with so many assholes who think that they know how to play the game or think think or know that they're better than you. Like, I've I've raid-led, like, group finder people to 2K+, plus back in, like, Shadowlands oh. and, um, and BFA. Right, like, and this was like an RBGs. I and I've gotten 2K and, and solo queue as well too. I'm not solo queue and uh, twos and threes as well too. Right, so okay. it's not like it's not like I suck at the game. 
right? But when you get to that level, you start facing people who are champions of the horde, champions of the Lions, 2,400 plus players that know the game and they also stroke their dick while playing the game at the same time while also trying to tell you how to play your class. And then the, the fucked up part about it is, is that you're really good at the game, but then you have to, then you start to realize they're kind of fucking right. They are over there doing that and doing that while also still doing something as well too, right? So like being, and being able to real to play PVP is realizing that there's always going to be somebody better than you. Sure. That's, that's truly what it is. And that's why a lot of people don't really engage with it is because there's so many ways to like, skin a cat but in world of warcraft there's really only one way to skin a cat and that's by knowing what each class can do and how your class reacts to each other class that's it because mathematically it works on paper every single time that's why when you see like the arena world champions it's always the same fucking classes same specs because the shit works the shit just works and that's why we're at this point now where we're kind of like who cares about PvP? Just fix our game in general. That's why people are so, voicing for it. So, so I, I got a question for you, right? So as, as a person who doesn't really PvP all that much, there was a change in the game's, um, let's say, design with uh, stat with, with, with uh, stat normalization, right? A mm -hmm. few, I think it was done in Legion, maybe the where where like one like ten item levels difference would lead to mm -hmm. like a one percent uh, gain. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about that in terms of like the balance of PvP? Because it sounds like mechanically, there's all there people are going to go for the class that solves the most problems most consistently. But so to me, that works because technically that system is still in place right now with item levels, right? Okay. Because the item level is just that you can see it on front now versus because you know when you go into PvP, your stats scale up to only a certain amount. Like it's like eight, it's like four eighty nine or something like that. Yeah, I've seen some four eighty nine right? stuff. So four eighty nine, it scales up to four eighty nine. That's that's the highest that it can go. It can't go any higher. So th technically, that's still in the game. I, I, we can't get away from it. We can't get away from it since they introduced it in Mob, and that's just it. It's it's been that way and it's gonna stay that way. I don't <laughs> dislike it because to me, in my head, at least I know that someone else can't have like more hp than me unless they're a different class the only reason i do have some small peeves about it is that i'll see i'm a hunter i'm wearing male armor but a warlock will have more hp than me. you know what i mean and i'm like that doesn't really make any sense well, or my may... hp is like hugely different from theirs well that may be a a vestige of warlock being back in uh vanilla if you remember yeah. correctly, they had so many abilities that would help them avoid taking damage uh, or have extra health because some of their abilities would siphon life, well, like like mm -hmm. would take would take their life, would take their health away. So by having that, by having all these extra defensives and this extra buffs and things, it's it's something there. And we actually got to see um, if you remember back in I think it was the shadow crafted stuff in TBC. Uh, for Warlocks, it had very, very little stamina, but the stat priority was great, and it didn't work for a mage, because mages needed the sta the extra stamina, but Warlocks with all their extra stamina and defensives and things like that, it was it was fine. And, and it, was, it, was fine. it was good all the way up until, like, mid-tier 5, if I remember okay, correctly. Okay. So, so it's, it, that could be a vestige. And again, no matter how much these classes change, uh, there is always a root of, okay, this is what we want it to do. And... You know, sadly, That's is, sadly, the devs. You know, as as much as I we love the devs, because I I do love the devs. They do good work. We do love the devs. Uh, you know, and and uh, they don't. They're not as open about class design philosophy, in particular, as some people may like. Because you, Kuma, you may want to ask. All right, Hunter. Hey, survival. Um, could it possible? Could we possibly get like maybe a Titan's grip, alternative? You know, we do a weird, like, oh. just as a thought. Like as as a, yeah. as a, as, a, as an as an end cap talent. Right, end, end cap of a branch, you know, a Titan, I can now dual wield two Agi weapons, you know, whether it be single, double, whatever, fine, doesn't matter. And, you know, and maybe they'll answer, maybe they won't, it, it doesn't matter. But that, that's, that's, that's the one of the strengths I like about Blizzard when they, when they, the, the Blizzard devs, when, when they're, the community is in a positive motion, is because they tend to be more open about stuff. They tend to talk more. They tend, and, and obviously, I like the game. I, 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 I play the game. You play the game. So, yeah. PvP, I, I, I guess I guess the answer is, if you were to somehow reach that mythical balance, right? That idea of, of, of balance, what would that even look like? 
Uh, hunters would always be at the top. <laughs> Warriors would be in the middle top. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's like, he's like, like, uh... No, I'm just kidding. I, honestly, it was just I would just call for I I personally can't even think of what that would be. I think the best way, result for Blizzard to be able to fix it, if if the perfect world would be Blizzard listening to the PvP community. Listening to what the people who are actually playing the fucking game out here, living it day in, day out, you know what I mean? Because developers aren't, they're doing their jobs. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're doing their jobs doing different things. What if you're the PV- lead PvP designer, but your favorite thing is PvE? You know, I don't know if that's how it is there, but, you know, th- th- it could be that kind of wacky shit. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you aren't the one that's in the mud doing it, you got to listen to the people who are in the mud struggling. Figure out how to help them out, because they... Are typing it. We're typing it out. We're voicing our opinions everywhere, just like the PVE guys are. But for some reason, we're just kind of like kicked to the curb, basically. And like one of the biggest testaments is that we get a bat a new battleground like maybe once every three expansions, and not like, without one being taken away. Without what? Yeah, without one being taken away. You know what I'm saying? Like we never. Like if anything, we should be getting a new battleground, a new BG. Every expansion, if not once every like other major patch or something like that. You know, I'm talking about not not like baby patches. I'm talking about like big patches. You know, like like one, Emerald one, Dream two, came out. Three. Yeah, yeah. It's like Emerald Dream came out. So there's a new Emerald Dream battleground or something like that within the zone. How hard is it to reuse properties that are already there? Well, I mean, you, you figure. So let's 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 explore the Emerald Zone, the Emerald Dream battleground. Okay. Well, it's uh, you know, it's uh, Arena of Nightmares. Uh, yeah. you know, something like that. You like go in, it's a PvP zone. There's uh PvE objectives too. That way you can you can do like so you know you got like yeah. nightmare monsters running around, but it's a, it's a it could be a free for all or or whatever. Like I, I again, it's 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 something there. And, and 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 hindsight, of course, is 2020. We can always look back and, and I'm not being critical. I'm not uh, of of or or I guess overly critical. But I'm saying that, that you know as a person, I don't PvP. But when I hear see people like, man, I wish there was more to do. It's like. Yeah, I, I can see that, because the Mythic Plus community tends to eat pretty well. You know, the fact that we get some, we get some new, we get we get eight eight dungeons. Uh, they're the reason. And they're going back and redoing old dungeons yeah. for y'all now which, too, which is, which is insane. That's a great idea. Like I honestly, yeah. I think it's a good idea. Uh, Throne of Tides can go away though. Uh, right. really, really can can. Well, go I mean, come on, man. When they do, whenever they do a Mythic Serpent Shrine, uh, SSC, man, I know Serpent Shrine Cavern. I know you signed up for it. Uh, no, or, or no, not Serpent Shrine Caverns. I'm thinking of fucking um yeah, Whaling like, Caverns. Yeah. When I, they do a Mythic Whaling Caverns, I know you're gonna want to do it, man. As long as they have the original jump and they didn't extend it. Meaning, hey, of remember, course, baby, of course. The original jump where you go, you fall. Like it's, it's there. Like that's the thing is, I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind Mega Dungeons as a Mythic Plus uh, thing. I just, I, I don't like the fact. I, I guess if we're gonna talk about Mythic Plus and, and gearing and, and, and so it's, it's the gearing, right? Because mm-hmm. of the fact that a lot of my best trinkets come from Mythic Plus. Problem is, is mm-hmm. I can't get the highest track unless I get it out of the vault, and I, I'm not, not a fan of that. So let's, let's say, let's, since, since we're talking about various things, why don't we mention this? Is there any part of the game? That you feel is overpowered. I think raiding is overpowered. Really? Yeah, if you're in a really strong raiding guild, you technically don't need to PvP too hard. Because if you guys are doing mythic, you get you automatically have like some of the highest gear. I will so, I will say as a as a mythic raider, I mean my gear that I get off the first four or five bosses uh is uh goes up to 489 so goes up to 489 yeah. that's the max pvp level right so if you're able to get pvp gear and mid max with raid gear you're doing you're doing fabulous you get what i'm saying you don't have to rely on certain so many different things from pvp you can go grab some more optimized things even if it's just a weapon in general is better than having to use the pvp stats it because say you you got the legendary weapon in pvp you get what i'm saying if you have a mythic raid version of that you're decimating in pvp now, like I, there's I, no I, way around it i do want to mention that the myth the uh the the legendary only has one item level there's not a mythic. oh what is it it's 496 uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's no, no, no. yeah. I, I'm not saying it's not strong. I'm just saying that there's not different tiers, at least, where it's like, well, you got okay. the heroic version and the normal version. It, it's it's one version. It's Feralath, the Dream Render, 
And, uh, you know, I like to call it Fear of Wrath, the dream ender, because it never drops. But up, up, but up, up. Sad. Uh, <laughs> you know, so that's that, uh, that's that's uh, that's one of those things. But yeah, no, I, I okay, I can understand. So if we're if we're still still on the overpowered thing, so, and we mentioned PvP because you're a big PvP here. Uh, how do you feel about specific gear back for PvP that that may like like the resilience gear as it was? I like that. Time? Do you really like that? I like. I well, I don't like resilience. I like versatility. You like verse? Okay. I, I like verse a lot more because it's just that one stat and it's not another stat on top of it. I don't like whenever they try to add all these different shit, different things to the game, man. Like, just give us the basic fundamental stat stick of Dungeons & Dragons and let's leave it at that. I don't need... Like, because the way I look at it this way is avoidance is trash, leech is trash. Why are these stats even in the game if they don't do anything? Like if I if I'm a if I'm a demon hunter and I have leech, I should be leeching really crazily. You you do as a as you do yeah you you do like leech is leech is really good like I don't so as let me let me let me put some game at you right so leech mm. as a uh, as, so the, the 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 max cap for all your tertiaries is about twenty percent right okay uh and my I at least this is the last time I I hit the cap and I did it on speed on my my DK so I had a twenty percent mm. speed which was hilarious uh but. Check it out, right? Leech works when you do damage or you heal. So as a healer, when I get Leech, if I'm casting a heal, I get some of that as a bonus heal to me, which mm -hmm. means that I don't have to take time to heal myself. Avoidance as a tank or as a healer or even as a DPS uh, means that it's just damage from area effect attacks. Now, when you're raiding Mythic Plus, there's a lot of AO group-wide AoE stuff, and if I can mitigate that just a little bit, Mm -hmm. Not then my my personal defensives that I use are more effective, and the the healer doesn't have to panic as much. Um, you know, I and, and I, I think I think that's it. now with verse verse obviously has two effects. It increases damage and healing done, and it reduces mm -hmm. damage taken uh, at mm -hmm. at half at at half potency basically. So yeah. I, I I like verse as a as a tuning knob, and I can see why in PvP it's it's great because the idea is you're you're not this is not a long engagement. This is meant to mm -hmm. be. I'm meant to you know pound and then the fight's over it's 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 almost like uh like aido you know we draw from the lake see, that's, no and that's why i mentioned the leech thing because in pvp leech is like non-existent avoidance yeah. is non-existent uh, avoidance would be nice for like rbgs and leech would be really great if they worked effectively in these pvp scenarios but they don't like avoidance would be so good because when we team clash which is what you usually do in an rbg you team clash it would be nice to have a shit ton of avoidance to avoid all the random aoe that's going on because that's all that people are doing in those situations yeah they're focusing down the target but i'm doing a a, a, a aoe rotation right now yeah. you know what i mean i should be trying to mitigate be able to mitigate some well, of that, I, I, but there's no way to do that. Well, the re and, and I think it's the reason is is this, is the PVP design, right? So you're mm -hmm. it's 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 there is a difference between me, you, and 18 other people taking down that big guy and going get in their pockets, uh, versus True. versus you know players with player capabilities, even if scaled mm -hmm. up, scaled down. There's there's a difference there, and you know you build for different styles of fights. Um, Leech works well when I've got a big when I've got a big meat target that I can I can sustain off of. But mm -hmm. when the fact is that you know I'm fighting a team that has three rogues and I don't have I don't really hit diminishing returns on stun for a yeah. while, I'm dead before I hit the diminishing returns. So it doesn't matter about the avoidance. It doesn't matter about the leech because yeah. I I'm I'm stunned. Or I'm blinded, yeah. or I'm feared, or I'm horrified, or I've looked at Twitter without eye condoms, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> so that's that's you know, it's one of those things. Like, I mean, that, that, that's what happens. So, so I I understand. So, so your answer to the overpower question is: if you have a a high level performing game uh, group, you basically play a different game. Yeah, you play a different game completely. And I, I'll agree like, with that because I, because I'll, I'll be real with you. Like I bring in, like we do the stuff on stream. I'll, I'll bring it. I'll get some lower level people, right? Who are, who are there, and like me, Strick, and like you know Lux or Frag or somebody like that. We'll, we'll all go into like a twenty, and we'll, we four man to twenty. Wow. Okay. Like, we, like, and it, and and I was not on my a strong, a, a very strong character, so it was like three and a half. And we we knocked it down. And and granted, you know, people are like, oh, it's not that impressive, Nim. It's like, okay, sure, it, it it may not be the most impressive, but 
you know. But you're four man to twenty. Why most people can't even complete a ten? Yeah, or 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 well, the point is, is that it's through good use of class mechanics and high player skill and high player item level, you can do a lot of things. And uh, for all of PvP's cooperation towards objectives, PVE has way more cooperation because. We we on chat will be like, hey, look, you know, I gotta call out. Hey, I got, uh, you know, we need to interrupt on, uh, you know, fell frenzy. Okay, I got this one. Boom, Lux, you got the next one. Boom, you know, frag, get the next one. Boom, you know, and and we just and it's and we just do 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 and just keep it rolling. And you know, it it's it, there's less of an ego thing. Like, don't get me wrong, my 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 good one of my great WoW friends, Stricken, is an excellent blood DK. Has an ego, well deserved. We we mess when he messes up, but but like he as a raid lead calls everything no and so so i so when we when we when we learn how to do a fight we learn how to do a fight from the ground up and it it makes it better because then now everybody knows it and everybody can teach everybody else if we're in pugs so i mm. i under, i agree with you that that playing with a group of skilled players who are dedicated who try and show up on time like you've got that's a different game entirely yeah. that 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 is an entire because now you're out of pug hell you don't have to worry yeah, about man. about anything. And when you go in, when you go into a group like that, like you, there's a slot. You're like, holy, like this is this is smooth. This is like yeah. a dance. It's like butter, bro. All right. So uh, now, now let's let's talk about the community, right? We we let's talk about the community itself. So obviously, you and I have seen uh, various people do various things. But I want to ask right now, you know, is there any any part of the group that you're affiliated with, or any individuals you would personally wish to shout out, Kuma? Well, Black Mafia all Black, day, every day. Black Mafia, wow. Okay, I've I, I've I've seen them on on uh, on Wow Twitter a little bit from time to time. It's it's one of those things that if you don't actively always like stuff, shit just falls out of your out of it your just feet. Falls out. It just falls out, man. The Mafia for sure, one hundred percent. That's been like my baby since I joined them last year. I, honestly, I've grown a lot since I've joined them. The people in there are amazing people. They uh, they bring very high level skill content to the game. Um, I'm actually surprised by Zari busting out. Uh, I'm pretty sure that he has a person for every single day of this month for Black History Month of a black person like voicing or doing oh, something. Oh, you talking about in Sh the Shadowhunter Amani? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah Zari. That's, dope. that's yeah. dope. Like I I saw that and it was like it just it it because here's the thing. I played Alliance for most of my time, uh, mm -hmm. doing this. So you don't even see that. That's not yeah. that's not a thing. And then so I see this and I, I retweet some of the stuff and I'm like, holy shit, like there are so many black voices in this game. And I like, didn't even know, bro. Like I want I want I want I want Blizzard to be like, can you do something about that with the devs too? Because mm -hmm. like yes. that's a perspective, yes. right? I look, I get the caucasity, right? Mm -hmm. I'm there. But also People write different things, so it could be it could yes. be a lot of fun. It it, it could yeah. I, I don't know I just but yeah Imani like I I talk I talk with Prince Imani like I talked to him and he's just he's just like word so it's just this is really cool to see see all, and, and just people like I had no idea I I I I had no idea That's this person cool. and and I I don't know any the VA is really off off top of my head for any character, um but it's one of those things I I see I scroll through Twitter like oh hey that's really dope. Bro, there's so many that I, I'm i telling you, when he told me, and I've been seeing how he's been doing it every single day, I'm just like, wait, what? That person played this? You're lying. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And then I'm like, wait a second, now it makes sense. Yeah, wait, now it makes sense. Now but I really, it's the Mafia, and it's just, uh, what was it? Oh, Yama. Yama, too. Yama's our like president. She's like the one who holds it all together. Yeah, Amazonia. That's that's my boo. I, I love her to death, man. She's been there a lot of like late nights talking about shit, just like dealing with stuff, man. But realistically, man, like we're a real like tight unit that really like to get shit done, man. We're here to stay too. That's kind of the weird part about it is like it may not it may seem like we're kind of like here and then there, here and there, but we're here to stay, man. We're we're, we're on and off, just like how everybody else is when it comes to playing wild, man. Well, yeah. Everybody takes a break every once in a while. It, 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 it just gets, the grind can get a lot, and, you know, mm -hmm. things here sometimes aren't fun. Sometimes your favorite class gets nerfed or changed, and you're like, Ugh! like, why are we doing this? Why did you do this to the mm -hmm. thing that I love? I I, I, I feel you. I feel you. So, uh, so Black Mafia, wow. Uh, and you said Yamazon? 
Yamazonia. Yamazonia. My apologies. Uh, but I just want to make sure that I, I pronounce the names correctly uh, and all that jazz. Uh, just because, you know, my name's Nim or Nimicry if you're feeling professional. And I always, one of the checks I use, and this is really funny, you know how you get those sponsorship emails, right? People are like, oh, I love your content. Every time I get on a call with somebody, I ask them, how do you pronounce my name? Right? How do you Ooh, pronounce Ooh, I like and, that. And because because if, if you're not familiar with how I pronounce it, I pronounce it like is Nimicry. I replace the M with an N. So it's mimicry, but it's with me, mimicry. And the joke is that I'm a bad copy. Because when you put something through a copier, there's a small error. There's the small error. That's the joke. Congratulations. That's deep cut Nim lore. Absolutely <laughs> valueless. Absolutely valueless. But fun, to, fun is a little check. Because if, if they say anything other than mimicry, I'm like, oh, you've not watched a single thing I've, I've done. Don't lie. Yeah, to me. exactly. Don't you don't, don't lie. To me. Me. Yeah, just do like it's fine. Like it can be business. It doesn't have to be friendly. Just just don't lie to me. It's very simple. Yeah. You know, and so so I do that. So all right, now before we we're we're gonna we're gonna go into a more fun half or fun part before we before we end. Um yeah, so what I want to ask there, uh Kuma, do you have any questions for me specifically? What games do you like to play besides World of War? Ah, oh, well, I'm a big fan of the Yakuza franchise. Uh, hey, I just, it's I not just, called Yakuza no more, buddy. What are you talking uh, about? It's like a dragon. Yakuza like a dragon. I'm familiar. I'm familiar. Bro, that's bro. Yeah. That is such. That is one of the biggest L's I've ever seen a game take. I... Was talk, taking the call me from Yakuza to like a dragon, and I'm just like, what? But uh... I actually did a deep dive, and the Japanese like are trying to erase the Yakuza from their timeline. Actually, yeah, yeah. They're it's trying a... to. They're just trying to trying to take that entire period of when they like were like heavily in uh, doing shit throughout japan and especially like the modern times and stuff like that they're trying to erase all of that man yeah there's a war on the gokudan uh the, yeah, yeah. The noble and chivalrous men i believe that's that's the actual word for that they use to refer themselves as gokudan um yeah. but but that and, and and it's interesting how rgg studios writes the games in a way that kind of mirrors real life with you know, mm -hmm. with Japan, and then the the disillusion, and then I be, I just beat Infinite Wealth, and I will tell you that was that might be the game of the year for me. Infinite Wealth was what? it's so good, but I also Ours was good. Here's the thing, like I also like like Ichiman Kazuga is is my spirit animal in this case, right? Like because I I wake up and I okay, so check this out. I, 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 a little, little bit more deep lore, but, but I wake up and try to help people. So we look here, right? You'll notice, bam, little paladin symbol, okay? Yeah. You'll notice the same paladin symbol on uh, the mug with my name and all okay. that. Jazz. All right, so when I, when people are your subscribers to me in Patreon or whatever, I send, and, and the reason I choose a year is not because these are expensive to make or anything. Um, it's that by that time, I know enough about you to where I can offer something other than fluff. Right, and I send I send these out with a with with a uh, a letter that I I type. I used to handwrite, but my handwriting's terrible, so it's a good thing I'm going to medicine because my handwriting's already terrible. Uh, but perfect, and and it, and it explains the purpose of this pin, and that it it offers one of one to four things: uh, some encouragement, gentle chastisement, guidance, or general life advice. And it's a personalized letter. Each letter is unique because each person is unique and by spending that amount of time with with me uh and and hanging out and such i learn enough about you to where i can actually make something that is meaningful as opposed to just fun now the the the, the trick here with with the paladin symbol right is that this i i i only encourage people to wear this when they are in what's known as a pro social mood meaning they are designed they they are in a mood to work for the betterment of society, right? And the reason why I say why why I say where then is because it is a voluntary burden, meaning you being you going out of your way, Kuma, to help you. I'm sure you're a perfectly wonderful man, normally, and and that's fine. But you, let's say you you you, you take that to the next level, right? And you voluntarily try to be as helpful as you can for a day. That's very tiring. That's very tiring. Some days you may just not have it in you. The bear needs to sleep. I get it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so you just you're just normal, nice Kuma. That's when you don't put on the thing because this is this is it, it comes again from when I was in the military, which was you take that hill regardless. You're tired, you're broken, you're sore. You take that hill after the victory has been achieved. 
then you can rest. Same thing. So I, I live that way, kind of like a, a comic book hero. And it's done it, it it's it's done good things, it's done bad things. But we were talking about Yakuza, and I, I got on a diatribe here about this with Ichiban Kazuga, it ties into that, which is that I like his attitude. The yeah. the unabashed positivity and the unabashed, we're gonna try to make this work. Yeah. And and I, I, I like that more than while well, Kiryu is a very uh cool character, I like the 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 emotion and the expressionality and and everything that, that Ichiban does because if you know his story he that man has been dealt every bad card in the book but he still somehow you know at the beginning of of infinite wealth you know he stretches at one point he's like all right it's another great day to make a difference you know it's like okay i'm i'm there for that i'm there for that golden retriever type energy yeah. So that's that. That's me. That's that's so. So I do. I do the Yakuza. I do Final Fantasy. Um, you know, like a dragon, all that jazz. Uh, and I will at some point. Uh, you know, like I like I like Soulsborne games as well. Big fan of uh Dark Souls, Sekiro, uh Bloodborne. I've beaten all of them. Uh, Lies of P. I'm on like the last boss. Uh, and it's it's uh it's a challenge. But I I love those games. I love those games. They're good games. Oh, they are. They are. All right. So I, I, I'll, I'll let you, if you got any more for me, let me know. If not, we can Let's see. wrap this up or do some more fun stuff. What's a good go-to snack for you? Go-to snack. Oh, Lord. Um, I am a huge fan of instant ramen. I love instant ramen. Ooh, Big fan okay. of instant ramen. Um, I also will say that if I get a chance... Um, you know, as a go like a go to snack, uh, I'm, I'm like I, I I like a lot of uh, dried meat and dried fruit. So like dried mangoes, mm. fantastic. Um, dry, you know, like jerky is great. And if I am Walker Black Label and other whiskeys, oh, Black is, Label Scotch. So we're not we haven't I haven't been drinking today as I, I hit the gym earlier today and uh hey, you know, good on you, buddy. The, well, you know, I like to be strong. You got to be. You gotta, you know, I, I gotta be strong enough to uplift people, and that's mm -hmm. and that sometimes people, you know, they don't want to be uplifted, and uh, you know, it is what it is. We we do our best, uh, and with me studying to be a psychologist, you know, I want to demonstrate that even though you can engage in things, it doesn't necessarily have to define you. Like I like whiskey, I like whiskey mm -hmm. a lot. I just pulled that out there. That wasn't put there before the show, right? That was there from uh, from from you know, I don't know, a couple nights ago when I when I got mm -hmm. to work. And the idea is that it's there, I like it, it's around me, it could be considered toxic or, de or, or uh, you know, detrimental to my life, but it doesn't control me. Same nice. thing with video there games. Like, I love, I love WoW, there are days I don't play it because I have to work, I have to do homework, I have to do other stuff. And when I, so it, it doesn't control, it's, it's everything in moderation, including mm -hmm. moderation. And, and so- exactly one of those things we'll wrap this up here because we could go on forever yeah. about about that don't worry i, I still want to talk about this but uh, but we're we this is the one this is more about wow than one piece but i saw the mugiwara you know jolly roger and i was like i gotta we, we got we gotta do that we got we gotta have a little little diatribe that being said uh kuma why don't you take time plug your social media stuff here uh as you okay. will um and then we can we can wrap up it's literally naked kuma on everything youtube x twitch TikTok, Instagram, you'll find me on all those. All right, and I'll have that on the screen as well. As Naked Kuma on 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 everything. Um, everything. We, we did. I did have to ask. Uh, OnlyFans. Man, the OnlyFans might be this year. You know what I'm saying? I've been slimming down a lot. You know what I'm saying? I've been starting to look a little cut. You know what I'm saying? I'm starting to build muscle and stuff too. You know, so we'll see. We'll see. I mean, we, we I'm not we, gonna make no promises, we stand but maybe a bear king. Year. We we stand yep. a bear king, and based on hey. the content we have here, it's gonna be nice and spicy. Hey, you know what? Hey, they can hit me up in the DMs. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, uh, it's been a wonderful time. Thank you guys for tuning into the first episode of what I'm tentatively calling a Reputation Buff. Uh, everyone, please be safe. Enjoy yourself. And remember that uh, you might be the reason that somebody smiles, but you're definitely one of the reasons that somebody remembers with vitriol. <laughs>